Hey guys, welcome to the newest episode of BlizzPlanet.com's Diablo Dialogue. Now as always, I'm your host, the bearded gamer, Chris Arnone. Now before we talk last week's question, got something to tell you. Okay, starting next week and running all through November, well, first off, I'm going on vacation for a little over a week, and then I come back for a week, and then Paul, our cameraman, he goes on vacation for a week. And so as a result of all these kind of crazy logistics, Eldorian has decided to do what he is branding No Bearded Gamer November, which sounds kind of mean. But anyway, the idea is he's going to sit at home in front of his computer, you know, like he does, and uh, do some gameplay videos, do some voiceover stuff, uh, things of that nature, not involving Paul or myself. But don't worry, I'll be back December. I'm coming back after my birthday. My birthday's actually near the end of, of November, so by the time you see me again, I'll be older. Of course, technically that's always true, but moving on. So let's talk last week's question. Uh, now, we hadn't talked much about patch 1.1, or as it's sort of colloquially known, the PvP patch. And we want to know, what are your ideas for the perfect Diablo 3 player versus player, PvP? Uh, arenas? World PvP? Some other crazy off-the-wall ideas? Some of the stuff I mentioned? Here were your best comments. So thanks so much for your comments. We'd love to get your feedback. Love showing off those best comments every week. Now, let's get into the weekly news roundup, or is it really is gonna be this week, the patch 1.0.5 weekly news roundup. Stay a while and listen. So as you can imagine, this video is pretty much all about patch 1.0.5. It is here, it has been released. Most of you have been playing it for like a week, right? It's awesome, I hope, for most of you. Uh, but you know, for those who guessed October 16th, you are correct, Eldorian was wrong, huzzah! <laughs> Sorry, I went to, El to Renfest a lot this year. Uh, now, we've gone over in the past a lot of what was coming what, what, in patch 1.0.5, a lot of the changes that were becoming available. But we're gonna do you know, a brief summary once again of those changes. Now, first off, let's talk Infernal Machine. Now, it's a new event where level 60 players can go and fight sort of uber versions of bosses that appear throughout the game. Uh, now, you'll need to collect several items. And now, these include three keys, some blacksmith plans, and then you have to loot and collect and build these build pieces for a legendary ring called the Hellfire Ring. But don't worry, I know it sounds like a lot, but Eldorian has a video to show you how it's done. Check it out. Hey guys, I wanted to take some time to do a quick little explanation of how Infernal Machine works. First off, in order to craft the Infernal Machine, you need to farm four different things, three keys and the plans. The Infernal Machine can only open one portal at a time, and once used, you'll need to farm all three keys again, but not the plans. The keys will never drop unless you have five Nephilim Valor stacks, and at monster power 10, the keys will drop 100% of the time. The bosses in the Infernal Machine can drop powerful loot, including one of three parts needed for the Hellfire Ring. There's three realms, the Realm of Discord, the Realm of Turmoil, and the Realm of Chaos. Each of those realms have a chance of dropping that portion of the ring that you need. The first key you can find in Act 1 in the Fields of Misery. The monster is a goat mutant named Odeg the Key Warden. He has Jailer and also uses a triple fireball attack. The second key can be found in Act 2 in Dolgar Oasis. The monster is a dune dervish named Sokar the Key Warden. He has a motor ability, missile dampening, and is electrified. The third key can be found in Act 3 in Stormfront. The monster is a more loose spellcaster named Zareth the Keyword. His attack replaces meteor skills so that it uses zombies, slows enemies, and is also an illusionist. The plans for the Infernal ma Machine can be found in Act 4 in the Silver Spire Level 1. The monster is a terror demon by the name of Necrit the Keyword. His special attacks are an area of effect fire damage over time attack, knockback, and jailer. Once you get all of these items, you take them to the blacksmith and have him make the infernal machine for you. It's recommended that you farm several keys at once before you head in, so that way you can have a good shot at getting 
you know, those places for the Hellfire Ring. Speaking of which, you need five stacks of the Nepal and Valor buff to get a chance for it to drop. And each level of monster power increases the chance by 10%. So that's how you put that together so you can engage in the Infernal Machine. Now there's also something called Monster Power. Now what this allows you to do is turn on Monster Power. And you can go it from level 1 to level 10. And it increases, as you can imagine, the power, the monster power, the difficulty of the enemies you face in Diablo 3. But of course, higher risk means higher reward. Now, Adorian and Paul have been getting their asses kicked by like skeletons and falling and shit. And why don't you just watch the video and see how it goes. Hey guys, I wanted to go over a little bit about Monster Power and how, how to access it. It's not on by default. So the first thing you want to do is go down to the game menu and then uh, go into the options. And then you're going to see a tab for gameplay and a little checkbox here that's not on by default. So you want to make sure that enable monster power selection is checked. And once you do that, you can access uh, monster power. You see here, you can change it from you know no monster power to monster power one. Uh, you can even change it for any of the different difficulties. So you can go to like normal, set it to monster power ten. Although I'm not sure why you'd ever do that because. Because people are going to use this for Inferno mainly. Let's see what happens when I go to Inferno difficulty and set this to Monster Power 10. Just, just for good fun. Let's just sit back and watch how much of a noob I am here. Let us seek honor to This place reeks of the dead. The fallen star must be near. And the tomes! Onward! <laughs> Yeah, that. So as you can see, it's very easy to get one-shotted by the most meager of enemies if you turn that monster power up too high. So be very careful with that one, all right? Just go easy on the monster power. Now, crowd control had some major, major changes. We actually went over them in detail in a previous video. Now, rather than going over them once again, I'm just going to throw you... Here we go, a little magical link to that video. It's also down in the show notes. You can click there and check out in detail all the changes that Blizzard made to crowd control. Now quickly, we're gonna go down a list of several other changes that have been applied in patch 1.0.5. Now, legendary and set item drops have been doubled. That's just been absolutely huge for people. Identifying rares is now reduced to one second. Crafting materials now stacked to 500. Uh, Items below eye level 58 no longer drop in Inferno, so it's a lot less trash than you're used to getting in Inferno. Uh, rings and amulets can now roll eye level 63 stats. Treasure goblins play a sound when they become aware of the player. Thank you. So annoying when, you know, your companion goes after, and by the time you realize the treasure goblin's there, he's already porting out. That sucks. Uh, and new effect has been added to legendary item drops. When they drop, a beam of light comes shining down. You don't actually get that sound effect. You just get the light showing you, ah, legendary item right there. Go pick it up. Uh, very helpful for not missing those anymore. Uh, now, all of these things are things that players have been asking for since launch. A lot of cool stuff. And don't worry, Blizzard is still hard at work. They've still got more patches to roll out, more ideas coming, more updates coming. Uh, but wow, just a lot of big updates for this one. So we want to know, now that patch 1.0.5 is out, what do you think? Is it much better? You know, is, is this finally the game you've been asking for that you thought you would get from the beginning? Or are you still like, oh, Diablo 3 is terrible. I want my Diablo 2. I'm going to wipe my ass with this game and keep moving on. We want to know what you think now that patch 1.0.5 is here. Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, why don't you check out the Bearded Gamer Show on YouTube. All kinds of, you know, bearded video gamey, crazy bearded guy goodness. And check out blizzplanet.com. All the news, reviews, great community, everything you need to know about Blizzard Entertainment Games. We'll see you guys next time.